idea how this uh, automatic or higher end uh, PCB assembly units works. But this type of the process required a very high level of uh, investment. And this is uh, also possible to only a uh, product which is very required in very high volumes, like a mobile phone or uh, audio video equipments. But the equipments like industrial equipments, which are not required in such a high volume, uh, we cannot have uh, this fully automated uh, 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 your systems. And then there are some, some process are done to be a manual process and there is a lot of component or the material handling between one process to another. And there also there are some uh, lot of two hole components which has to be done manually. So this is a photo of uh, our production line where we manufactured our product. Here this is a pickup placement machine and this is a reflow machine. Now being these processes are not fully in line, there is a lot of material handling and that's why we need to take a consideration what the care need to be required in a material handling. This is another photo of our uh, uh, production line. We have a two uh, uh, SMT lines. There are a two pickup placement machines. There are a two reflow machines and so on. Okay. Now we'll come to um, uh, our main agenda, which is a material handling or a component handling. Basically, while the component uh, handling, there are a cases of damage. The components can be a damage. So how the components will damage and how to avoid it. So before going to how to avoid this component damage, we must understand what type of the damage are, what is the cause of damage. So there are basically two types of the damage normally occurs in uh, uh, material handling. One is basically called as an electrical overdress and second is a moisture. These are basically two hidden uh, enemies which uh, damage the electronic component. Both the uh, cases we will go in a detail. Now, before understanding what is the electrical overpress, now please take a closer look of our data sheets. Every electronic IC is, is supported by a technical data sheets, and this technical data sheet mentions a lot of technical parameters. Normally in uh, every technical data sheet, there is a one chapter or one uh, paragraph which mentions the absolute maximum rating. If you take a closer look of this absolute maximum rating, there is a, something called as a supply voltage range. For this particular IC, which is basically a one A to D converter, the supply voltage range is from minus point volt, point minus point three volt to six volt. So, if any voltage not beyond this range is applied to this component, it will damage that component. So, this is, as the name implies, it is the absolute maximum rating. There is a no tolerance is specified. This is the point. If the moment the supply voltage goes beyond six volt, it will damage. The moment the supply voltage becomes less than a 0.3 volt, minus 0.3 volt, it will damage. So this is the supply voltage range. And for any digital input, it is specified that the input voltage range is from minus 0.3 volt to a VDD plus 0.3. So any moment, if the pin experience a voltage which is more than a VDD plus 0.3, that pin will damage. So these are two important specifications, normally specified are important specifications you know, pertaining to a material handling. And every, every data sheets, you can see this type of the absolute maximum rating for each and com each component. It is a mandatory rating uh, as per the IPC. IPC is a organization which standardize these uh, specifications. So, whenever there is any voltage is more than this absolute maximum rating, it damages the IC. Now, during assembly, 
or handling the components component are not having any supply we are so handling the bare component or a bare pcb there is no any supply is given to this pcb or a components that means the supply is uh, small that means a very small voltage if appears across the pin that component will damage and this process is known as a eos or electrical overtress okay yeah one thing i would like to mention all the participants you uh, please note uh, listen very carefully uh, try to take uh, some notes because there is a quiz and then the all answers are uh, hidden in these uh, slides different slides and you have to take a note uh, every time similarly another hidden enemy is a moisture this very fine pin components these components uh, normally this material or component ics are absorb the moistures so the moment when the manufacturer ships the component it it is specially packed and this pack are uh, vacuum pack vacuum seal pack and when this you assemble for uh, for assembly when you open this component the immediately is start absorbing the moistures of the atmosphere so then there are a different type of the component which absorb in a different uh, capacity so there are uh, in ipc has standardized the different categories of a component depend upon their moisture absorption level so there are different in broad category there are basically six type of the components uh, and this is known as a msl level so there are normally six type of msl level so msl level in many places we use the components which are the msl level 3 4 and 5 msl level 5a and 6 are some special levels required for military and space application so for example if the msl level 5 component is open from their original packaging it must consume or must soldered within the 48 hours or uh, and the moisture levels and the temperature level should not be more than 30 degree and 60% humidity similarly if msl level 4 type component is open it must be soldered within 72 hours and so so you can imagine this a very critical process this components are manufactured in a bulk they are not available in a small numbers the minimum reel it has to be assembled in a reel uh, for pick up placement machines it should be either in a reel or it should be either in a tray and then one tray or one reel consist of around 1000 numbers of component so basically everything is designed for a mass productions where but in a industrial environments we don't have that production levels we manufacture maybe 100 to 200 numbers per day so in that case what happen if you open this component and it not sold or within the 48 hours then what will happen so and how it is damaged this basically this component absorb the moisture and when this uh, after pick up placement process when the pcb is pass through uh, reflow oven this moisture is get converted into a steam and then this steam damage the component so if it is not consumed within this 48 hours then there is a baking process we need to bake these components for around 100 hours or uh, uh, 160 hours this is what uh, the ipc has specified we need to bake this component before use and then we can use it or other way round there is a special storage is uh, available which called as a dry cabinet in this cabinet like a fridge where we maintain the temperature here in this cabinet uh, unlike as a fridge where we maintain the temperature here is a relative humidity is maintained and uh, normally if the humidity is less than 5% is typically the humidity less than 5% is maintained in these cabinets and we can store these components uh, in dry cabinet for a larger time 
so these are the basically uh, first care for for moisture point of view we must have this dry cabinet and in uh, or the your assembly room should be a moisture control see this is not all the components are basically a uh, eos or moisture sensitive there are a lot of passive components like a capacitor transistors optocouplers diodes transformers they are not very sensitive to this and then uh, uh, this basically all these techniques is mainly for the high pitch ics so now we will focus on a eos electrical overtress so the how we understand if the high voltage is appears to any pin which is more than uh, the supply voltage the pin is damaged but where this voltage will appears from where this will be appear? so there are two sources of the voltage one is a electrostatic discharge and another is a leakage current of electrical power process equipments like a soldering iron or a wave solder machines or a pickup placement machine these are all electrical equipments which operate on a electrical uh, supply and if the then the insulation level is not sufficient then some of the electrical voltages get leaked on the uh, contact point and they may appear on the component and component may damage so there is a one source is a leakage and for to avoid this all the electrical equipment which is used in a pcb assembly or a material handling should be a properly grounded so grounding is very essential factor and another is a electrostatic discharge now we will take a more closer look for a electrostatic discharge in our school days we learn a static electricity to so just we will recall what we learn in a school days so all the material is basically made up of a atom and atom consists of a electron and protons electron is a negatively charged particle and a proton is a positively charged particle and normally for any material the number of electrons and the number of protons are the same and thus the material is basically a in a neutral conditions non charged conditions in few of the material so there are large number of electrons and they are rotating uh, across the nucleus and they are loosely bound if such type of the material is rub this two type of the material rub uh, on each other then some of the electrons pass from material a to a material b and the material a where the electrons are loose become a positively charged and the material b where there is a excess electron is become a negative charge so this charge is basically known as a static electricity this is what we are learned in our uh, school days and a few examples of the static electricity is when we walk on a insulating surface uh, like a uh, mat rubber mat it generates a rubbing of these two surface of our footwear and rubber mat and it collect the static electricity or simple uh, in a daily life when we comb our hair we generates the static electricity and we can experience this static electricity some study shows that we when we walk across the carpet it can generates as much as around the 35000 volts and it's also depend upon the relative humidity at that time if the relative humidity is between 65 to 90% then it can as low as a 1.5 kv but if the relative humidity is low it can be up to 35000 volts similarly we walk across the vinyl tile it is a 12 kv and then work on a workbench it might be a 6 kv and so so these figures and these figures are quite high so 
if you are even the humidity is level is high there is a quite large voltage is normally generated in our daily life and this is basically called as a static electricity this uh, there is a small uh, video how we as we normally walk on a carpet we start collecting the electrons and we start collecting the static charge and when we touch to any other person he might experience this uh, shock and this is called as a uh, static electric uh, shock and when the electric static charge is discharged to another uh, conductor or another person the discharge portion is called as electrostatic discharge when you touch any electronic component this static this, this static charge discharge through the component and this discharge is known as a electrostatic discharge and that is most hidden enemy of any electronic component so in quick uh, summary in quick summary uh, the flow of electricity between the electrically charged one object to another object so when we uh, walk in a carpet or when you use any sort of insulating material there is a generation of charge and when we touch to any conductive material that charge is discharged towards the ground and that is called as electrostatic discharge and this electrostatic discharge basically one of a serious cause of a damage some study shows that in assembly the 60% faults are due to a electrostatic discharge esd and the remaining are the faults which are basically a process related like a dry solder or and non properly handling of the process so if you can able to control this 60% charge we can control the lot of we can save a lot of cost this is a another visual when we collect a test to any metal part there is a sudden discharge of electric which is called as a static discharge here so esd is very hidden enemy in case of the electronic assembly we can feel the shock when there is a voltage more than a 2000 volts but even the component can damage with a very small amount of voltage like a 10 to 15 volts 30 volts which we can't feel so when we handle the component and the component might get damaged and even we don't know we don't understand when it is got damaged so due to esd there are basically two types of the failures one failure is called as a catastrophic failure where the component is completely damaged or a dead and this type of the failure we can able to detect during the uh, testing process normally a pcb assembly after the pcb assembly we test the pcb we assemble the unit and we again retest the unit so during this testing if the component is totally damaged it is get detected and we will need to replace it but there are other type of the damage which is called as a latent defect this is the most most dangerous things here because of the esd the component is not completely damaged its its performance is reduces it is degraded its life is partially reduced and this type of the component latent defect cannot be detected in a manufacturing or a testing process so there are a cases when we assemble the component we assemble the product we ship to a customer and over a period of time after maybe a few uh, days or a few months the product start failing and this is called as a latent defect and this is a most 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 uh, dangerous things in electronic assembly because this type of the detect this type of the defect cannot be detected during the testing in or in a manufacturing unit so this is a small study which we had done at our end if there is a component damage the cost to a company is around 100 to 500 numbers depend upon the component but once it is assembled on a pcb and then the pcb is uh, not functioning due to the damage in a component 
the loss could be as a as a 1.5k to 5k after the assembling of the unit and we found that the unit is not working the cost is uh, increased from 15k to 30k depend upon the type of equipment and if the equipment is shipped to a customer and it is fail at the customer or at the site then the cost can be anything which is more than 10 lakhs or so it's anything in fact the damage to a reputation of a company it is a not measurable damage it's very huge a damage so even a small uh, failure of a one component can uh, the damage can be a very high so it's very uh, essential to control the damage at at the earlier stage now again we will uh, come to a point where we will discuss how to control this damage due to the major esd process esd now there are two types of the materials one is a conductor which is a good conductor of electricity and another is an insulator now definition of a good conductor or definition of insulators is basically relative the good conductor material uh, in terms of a when you terms of talk about uh, wires the good conductors are basically copper or aluminum but and all others are not a good conductor but in case of a static charge or assembly the good conductor is a conductor whose resistance is less than a 10 kilo ohm so with respect to a esd or in with respect to a static charge the resistance any material having the resistivity or resistance less than a 10 kilo ohm we call it as a conductor similarly the resistance any material having the resistance more than 1 giga ohm we call it as insulators so these are the basically two broad categories of insulator and conductor but apart from this there is a another category we called it as a dcp tube this dcp tube terminology is very uh, popular in a ems services in a dcp tube where the resistance of the material is more than a 10 kilo and a less than 1 giga ohm and this dcp tube material is basically also called as a anti static material because it's not allowed for a human it is a insulator for human safety suppose during the manufacturing process if somebody accidentally touch to a 230 volts or high voltage he should not get a shock so we normally we recommend we should use some insulators which we had been studying from our schools and college days that whenever you do any electrical work you should use some insulator or insulating material for our own safety but here we are talking about we should use all the conductors and not insulators so the dcp tube material is act as a insulator for a human safety while it is act as a good conductor for static it is act as a conductor for anti static material for uh for a static charge so the dcp tube material is uh, having a range of resistance from 10 kilo ohm to 1 giga ohm so conductive and dissipative materials can be a grounded and for a static charge to remove a static charge we should have a safe path of this charge towards the ground that is only that is a basic concept of uh, esd protection so first of all don't allow to generate a static charge and if there is a static charge is generated then it should have a safe path to return to a ground so conductive and dissipative material can be grounded so it is a safe to use and the static charge can be removed insulating material cannot be grounded and the static charge cannot be removed so normally all the insulating materials should be avoided so the fundamental esd control principle is all conductor including the people should be grounded in any assembly lines 
all the materials should be either a dissipative and any material handling including the people should be grounded use ground dissipative surface all the surfaces should be a ground dissipative material remove insulator identify the insulators and substitute with the esdu protective or a substitute with the uh, dissipative material then there is a shielding when you remove after the pcb assembly the material at some point of uh, point of time you will have to take this material from this esd controlled area to outside esd control area in that case we should use some shielding bags the shielding bag is a, some sort of a conducting bag or anti static bag which would not allow external uh, static charge to be entered into the or uh, reach up to the electronic component so this is called as a shielding bag so whenever we move our material from a static control area it should be a properly in a shielding bags then periodically we should verify all these esd control activities what we are doing so there should be a periodic audits to check whether everything is under control or resistivity is not changed and it is within our range time if there is a insulating material or a dissipative material there might be a chance over a period of time it goes it become a insulating one so to control this there are a different type of the gadgets are used like a whisk trap where we uh, the person is connected with a whisk trap and the whisk trap is connected to a ground so this is basically a grounding of a personal so whenever we entered into a static control area or ems we should be a ground ourselves by using a whisk trap then uh, either we should not use a footwear in a pcb assembly area and if you want to use a footwear then the footwear should be made of a dissipative material not as a regular sleepers or a regular footwear which is made of a highly insulating material and which generates a lot of static charge so it should be a special footwear esd footwear similarly our cloth should be a either anti static or we should use a apron uh, of a made of a uh, esd apron so it will not generate the static charge so this is a typical workstation uh, in this workstation there is a carpet this is carpet is also made up of a uh, anti static material then this is workstation there is another carpet anti static carpet which is not allowed to generate a static charge then it is all this uh, even the chair is also made up of an anti static even this dustbin are also made up of a dissipative and these are the conducting plates and everything should be a properly grounded so this is a electrical uh, way so this uh, uh, floor carpet is also grounded this surface Uh, workbench surface is also should be a grounded and it should be a properly ground uh, there are two type of the grounds normally one is a power ground and another uh, is uh, instrumentation ground or signal ground so normally we should use a signal ground we should not connect this ground to a power ground uh, so in principle when we uh, if you compare uh, electrical assembly with the hospital then in any hospital there are a, there is operation theater and when we enter into the operation theaters we have to be uh, all the contaminated free and we should uh, everything should be a bacteria free and we should sterilize ourselves and uh, sanitize ourselves before entering into the uh, hospital operation theater the similarly thinking should be adopted when we entered into the pcb assembly area and then this uh, all the 
equipments or uh, it's it's necessary to check the resistive property of all the material or footwear or strips should be checked regularly so before start of the work it is a normal practice that we should check the continuity of this uh, and the resistivity of this even the for a footwear even for this uh, carpet area uh, the resistivity meters are used to check the periodically then there is a shield it's similar to a faraday shield when the material is moved out of the est control area it should be packed in a shield bag basically shield bag is a conducting bag it is a plastic bag but it is made of dissipative material or anti static material so if any charge static discharge occurs it is not allowed to enter the static charge or static discharge to a within the bag so these are the special shield bag which is used for storage of the material or handling of the or transportation of a material and third equipment is known as a ionizer it is also very uh, popular and required during the electronic process assembly this ionizer generates the positive and negative ions so even if you identify and then Uh, change the insulator insulating material in a assembly process there are some insulating material which cannot be avoided so we should identify that insulating material and it is normally marked as a process essential insulators so to avoid the collective of collection of a static charge on that insulators these ionizers are normally used these ionizers are generate the different ions and um, this they neutralize the static charge so this is a typical uh, uh, ems typical workbench uh, or esd control area so the, uh, there are uh, uh, ionizer you can find there is ionizer there is a uh, package containers bonding strips so you can uh, so this is a typical equipments required in this uh, room and it is also known as a clean room because it has to be a dust proof and then normally this uh, tea or uh, water bottles mobile these are also very insulating materials normally a personal belonging that also should be avoided in this room or it is not allowed in this room apart from this there is another uh, uh, set of uh, insulators or set of uh, equipment which is used for esd control like a uh, blows uh, or uh, chairs there are esd conductive paints so these are the different uh, additional esd protective components are required or used now in any organizations apart from pcb assembly there are places where the components are handled which is department like where the component are handled which is uh, incoming inspection area store area pcb assembly area so everywhere we have to take uh, this esd protection and we should conduct a regular audit uh, and we should have audit plan where we will conducting uh, resistivity of all these different type of material which we are using in a uh, process and we should cross check the conductivity regularly so uh, that's all from my side in today's so these are the care which is necessary to take during the electronic component handling and uh, assembly of a pcb so thank you for all